Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because we finally have a full speed PlayStation 2 emulator for Android. This is known as Ether SX2 and a few weeks back it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. It was in closed beta but now it's in open beta testing on the Google Play Store. If you're interested in checking it out, I will leave a link in the description. But before we get started here, I gotta say this emulator is absolutely amazing. I figured that a good PlayStation 2 emulator for Android or ARM was a few years off, but here it is. I mean, this is definitely going to be the go-to PlayStation 2 emulator from now on. It's actually based on PCSX2, and the PCSX2 team has given the developer their blessing, so this is good to go. And by the way, this is totally free on the Google Play Store. And I'm absolutely blown away by the performance of this emulator. What you're seeing this running on right now is the Snapdragon 870. This is a Xiaomi Pad Pro 5. Really nice little tablet, we got 8 gigs of RAM and that Snapdragon 870. This is Gran Turismo 4 running at 2x resolution with the OpenGL back end. And as you can see, it's running amazingly. I've got a Bluetooth controller connected and I'm good to go. I mean, this is really, really good performance. In the coming days, I will be doing a lot of testing on different devices. I'm going to go through the low-end stuff to the high-end stuff. I got a bunch of Android devices to test this on with a bunch of different SoCs. So we're going to see how this really performs on lower end chips and higher end chips. But when it comes to this video here, it's kind of more of an announcement video. I will give you a quick walkthrough on setting this up, but the developer has made it more than easy to get your PlayStation 2 games up and running on your Android device, be it a tablet or an Android phone. But so far, everything that I've tested on the Snapdragon 870 and 888 has run amazingly. I did run into a few issues when you're going up to like 3 and 4X with something like Ratchet and Clank. But I kind of expected that, you know, I'm running a PlayStation 2 game at 4x resolution on a mobile device. You're going to need some power to run it like that. I've also tested several different controllers, Bluetooth and USB Type-C. Xbox, PlayStation, even the Sataki, and the Razer Kishi. I didn't have to do any setup, it was already mapped out of the box. I did run into an issue with the 8 bit controller where Select wasn't really the Select button but it was easily fixed. The developer Talrith has released this for free on Google Play. There's no ads or anything. You can actually start using it right now on your Android device. And I'm gonna give you a quick rundown. It's just a quick walkthrough on how to get this up and running really quickly on your device. I'm not gonna go over the extra settings. I mean, there's a lot to this emulator and I will do a full tutorial. So keep an eye on the channel. Like I mentioned, in the upcoming days, I'm going to be doing a lot of testing on lower end devices, and then I can get a full tutorial out of the way going through each and every setting in this emulator. Okay, so first things first, with this emulator, you will have to provide your own PS2 games and a PS2 BIOS. Now for me, I've got a file manager installed up top here. I usually just place everything in my downloads folder, so we'll find downloads here. I've created a folder called PS2. And in here, I have a couple games. These are all ISO, as you can see here. Now, I also left a few inside of a different folder to show you that the emulator will scan through each and every one of these folders inside of your game directory. So I've got my games covered here. They're all .ISO. Now I need a BIOS. I just created a folder called BIOS, and I've placed them in here. Now, you won't need this many BIOSes. Just do a quick Google search, and you'll be able to find everything you need. A very common BIOS is SCPH10000.bin. This is a Japanese BIOS, or you can go with the US BIOS. I usually just import two to be safe. So with the games and BIOS out of the way, let's go ahead and download the application. We're just gonna head over to Google Play, and from the search menu, we're gonna search for Ether SX2. It's right here. We're gonna install it. This is early access, and we can start it from here. So we'll choose play and it's gonna give us a nice little walkthrough. I would recommend reading through everything here. We'll choose next. We've got some disclaimers, how to improve performance. There's a lot of stuff to read through and I would highly recommend going through all of this. Next. So settings. This is just our overall setting. This can always be changed later on. The device I'm using has a Snapdragon 870. I've left it at optimal safe defaults. You can go to fast and unsafe defaults. This is going to use a lot of hacks for lower end devices, but I would recommend just optimal safe defaults to start with. We can also change the aspect ratio here and we can change the theme. I'm going to leave it at four by three, optimal safe defaults. If you have a powerful enough device like the Snapdragon 845 and up, leave it right there. Next, we need to import our BIOS. I showed you that I put mine inside of a folder called BIOS. 
in my download folder, BS2, BIOS, and I'm just going to choose that SCPH 10,000.bin, and that's the Japanese BIOS. I'm also going to import a US BIOS. You can just stick with the single BIOS if you'd like to. Next, now we need to set up our game directory. This is where our games are going to be located. We'll choose the plus. We're going to go back to that PS2 folder and use this folder. So I've got my God of War 2 ISO here, Gran Turismo and Soul Calibur in their own folders, but those are also .iso. Use this folder, allow, next. Our setup is complete. We'll choose finish. It's going to scan that directory, import our games, and there you have it. So if you want to change the overall settings, three little lines up here. We're going to go to app settings. And like I mentioned, there's a lot to this emulator. I will have an in-depth tutorial coming up soon, but this is just going to be quick and dirty to get you up and running. So from here, we have general, system, graphics, audio, game list, BIOS, and advanced. We're going to focus on the graphics settings here. Now at the very top, we have two renderers that we can really choose from, or software, but that's really not going to get you anywhere. OpenGL and Vulkan. I would experiment with this with different games. There are reports that some games work better with Vulkan, some games work better with OpenGL, but with what I've been running, OpenGL has worked really, really well. Upscale. For higher-end devices, like the Snapdragon 870 or higher, maybe even the Snapdragon 845, you can upscale the resolution 2, 3, even 4 for some easier-to-run titles. On this Snapdragon 870, everything that I've tested so far has been at 2x, with really good performance, but I would stick with 1x just to start with to see how everything runs. Scroll down here, you can change that aspect ratio. I would leave it at 4x3, but you can go to 16x9 if you really need the screen space. And another thing I personally use, because we're all just really getting started with this emulator, is show speed. This is going to give us kind of a frame counter up in the top right hand corner. I also use show VPS. This is basically going to give us the speed of the game up to 100% and our frame counter so we know if the game is running at full speed or not. Now there's so much to this and that tutorial will be coming up soon, but I would start out with those basic settings and see what games run on your device. There's so many different SOCs out that a lot of these devices and games are going to perform much differently between all of those devices. But we're basically set up here. Let's start Soul Calibur 3. There's one more thing I want to show you. So now that we've enabled that VPS and the speed, it's up in the top right hand corner. And this is running at 50 because I need to change this to 60. It's just the specific game. Now right in the middle of a game, if we press the pause button, we can go here and save our game. We have a quick save and we have save slots. I'm going to go with save slot 1. If you want to load, go back, load. Anytime during a game, we can save and load. Press that pause again. We also have our settings. So while the game's running, we can actually experiment with the settings here, which is really, really nice. So yeah, that was just a quick and dirty setup. I'd actually like to know what device you're using and what kind of performance you're getting. So, uh, you know, if you don't mind, let us know in the comments below. Now, there's one last thing I wanted to show off here, and this was the first thing I tested once I got the emulator installed on my Galaxy S21. When it comes to these Galaxy S devices, we also have something called DeX built in. And if you're not familiar with DeX, basically it's an Android based desktop style operating system that comes built in with these Galaxy S devices. I believe from the S8 on up, even the Note series has it. I've just got this plugged in to a USB type C to HDMI adapter. I've also got some USBs on it to plug in my uh, keyboard and things like that. Got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth here. And as soon as I start the app up, it works great. And yeah, I'm a huge fan of emulation on Samsung DeX here. And now that we have full speed PS2, this is going to be even better. We can go full screen with it. We can minimize it. It's really up to you on how you want to play this. But I just started up Tekken 5. And we'll get into a little bit of gameplay on the bigger screen. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of DeX and I've done several videos on it. I've even taken older used Samsung Galaxy S9s and S10s and showed you how to turn them into kind of a gaming console. And now that we have access to a free full speed PS2 emulator for Android, this is just so much better.
And before we get out of here, I just wanted to show you one last thing running here. This is actually the Red Magic 6S Pro, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon 888 Plus. We have Bloody Roar 4 running here really well. This has a cooling fan built in, so we could run this continuously without any kind of thermal throttling. And most of these gaming phones do support display over USB Type-C, so we could always plug this into a much bigger screen. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Super excited about this. I hope you are too. I got a lot of testing to do here. Bunch of devices that I want to go through. Some older chips, some newer chips, some low-end, some mid-range. I also have a bunch of tablets that I want to install this on, so it's going to take me a little while to get another video out, but definitely stay tuned. Really appreciate you watching, and if you do end up testing this out on your device, let us know in the comments below what device you're using and what kind of performance you got. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.